Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to another video where we look at building a patch from scratch on the Korg monologue. So today we're going to be looking at some funky talking bass sounds. Now when I'm talking about sort of funky talking bass sounds, my point of reference is always going to be Bootsy Collins from Parliament and Funkadelic. Um, so we're talking about a sort of boom, boom, boom kind of sound, uh, which is you know usually generated by a slap bass being played through um, an envelope uh, follow a filter pedal typically but of course we're going to do it on monologue instead uh, so let's get started let's start from the initialized patch cool and let's drop down an octave because we are creating a bass so I want to start by creating um, a sort of fairly rich sort of initial sound for us to work with so I'm going to bring in both oscillators to begin with and I'm going to set them to uh, sawtooth of course, that slight detuning has given us um, some interesting stuff. We can probably even detune them a little bit uh, intentionally. Now, the nice thing about the monologue uh, on its VCOs is this shape control. The shape control does wave shaping. Um, it does different types of wave shaping on the different uh, VCO shapes. On the sawtooth, it kind of folds it into almost like a sawtoothy square wave. Uh, and what that can do is introduce some really useful bottom end to the sound. So just on VCO1, I'm going to turn up the shape control and get it to uh, a point where I've got some nice extra bottom end. Because of course we're making a bass sound. <laughs> So that's a nice rich sound with some useful bottom end. So uh, this bass sound, this funky bass sound, we're talking about this little boow, 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 boow sound. So what that is, is something with fewer harmonics, opening quite quickly, but not instantaneously to something with more harmonics, and then quickly dropping off again. So we need to start at a point with our cutoff on our filter, where we've got... Um, a darker sound. Probably not all the way to there, but probably somewhere around there. We can still hear some of that richness underneath it, but you know, a lot of it's been taken out. So if we want to get to a brighter sound, one of the ways that we can do it is by opening up our filter. So we could do it by hand if we wanted to, like that, but of course, Eventually, we're going to get tired uh, of doing that when we're playing. So we want something else to do that for us. And of course, that is what the envelope generator is for. So we're going to send the envelope generator to cutoff, obviously. And we need to carefully check uh, which um, uh, envelope generator type we're going to use. And the reason for this is that this wow sound is formed by us hearing the filter open up quickly but not instantaneously at the start of the note. Now these top two modes here, uh, the attack de decay and the attack uh, sustain decay modes, in these modes the envelope generator is also coupled to the VCA of the synth, so that's what controls the loudness of the output. So if we're going to have a fast but not instantaneous attack, that means that on these first two modes, that's also going to apply to the um, the volume of the sound. What that means is it's going to, we're going to miss that initial wow part of the sound, which is very much what we're after. So what we're going to use in this case is the gate mode. So the gate mode means that as soon as I press the key, the VCA just opens instantaneously. And when I release it, it, it closes again. So this means that if I have a fast but not instantaneous attack, I'm still going to hear it open up the cutoff, which is what we're after. So let's set the intensity. So at the moment, I've got an instant attack. We want to hear that wow thing happening. So it's fast, but it's not instant. And the decay we want to set. Accordingly. And at the moment, we don't really have that kind of vocal sound that we're after, but we can get that by turning up our resonance. At the moment, 
moment we're probably we can be a bit darker probably so we'll just turn down the cutoff so we've definitely got that kind of vocal wow thing happening. But at the moment it's not very expressive to play because everything is, is, is the sa- same every time I play it. So let's go into edit mode and head across to the fourth uh, light. And there's a couple of things here that allow us to add some expressiveness to the way that the filter is operating. So the first one is the cutoff key track. And what this does is it means that the higher up we're playing, um, the more open the filter is going to be. It basically couples the filter cutoff to the position on the keyboard. Uh, So that allows us to make sort of higher up notes be brighter. And that kind of makes sense if you think about um, a bass guitar. As you move up the fretboard and you hit those, those higher notes, there's more top end. So let's let's turn it up a little bit. It's not a massive difference, but without it, and with it, you can hear how those lower notes are darker. It's a cool sound, so we're going to keep that. The next um, thing along here is the cutoff velocity. So this, um, again, maps something to the cutoff knob. In this case, it is how hard we're playing the notes. Now, this is going to make a big difference. So if I turn this up to 100%, you can hear that that's very dark when I'm playing lightly. A lot brighter when I play hard, lightly. And much harder. So that allows us a lot more expressivity when we're playing. Now, both of these um, things that we've done here, when we're playing lower down, and just in in general, in the case of the cut off velocity, it tends to make things a little bit darker uh, by default. So we can probably afford now just to open our cut off just a tiny bit. Okay, so the other thing that I like to do in, in these kind of cases is just have a bit of pitch slur happening uh, by adding some portamento. Uh, so that's on the, the first light in the edit mode. So at the moment the portamento time is set to off. Uh, we don't want it. We don't want any sort of long, languid kind of things happening. We just want just a little fast slur, like someone quickly sliding up to a different note on a fretboard. <laughs> So like it's almost um, almost subconscious, but so this has allowed us to do two things. One, we're getting that slow and also allows us to um, uh, tie notes together like that. However, at the moment in the setting that we've got at the moment, if I play a note here and then play a note here, we don't get a slur because we haven't tied the notes together. But I want that slur every time because it adds an interesting attack to the notes. So to do that, if you go um, across to the next setting on the portamento uh, edit and go to the portamento, portamento mode, and we're going to switch that to on rather than auto. So that means that it will always apply portamento to every single note. So I can leave a gap. You can hear we've got that kind of slide happening. More obvious there. We also still get it. We do play like that as well. Okay. So um, that's one. One kind of recipe or one version of this recipe. However, we're talking about a sort of a talking vocal sound, although we've kind of got some sort of a vocal sound there. We do seem to be saying wow every single time. So let's see if we can find a vocal sound in another way. So I'm just going to turn down the intensity here um, and just open up my filter in general again. Lovely. And you can hear now. 
depending on how hard I hit, you can hear that uh, cutoff velocity being applied there. So the other way that we can get vocal sounds on the on the monologue is by using um, sync mode on VCO2. Uh, I will, I promise, do a video explaining what oscillator sync actually does, since it's my namesake, it makes sense. But uh, what I will say is that if we use the sync mode on uh, oscillator 2 and switch its wave shape over to triangle, this is how we get some really interesting vocal sounds. It tends to happen more in the higher octaves. So the way that we get vocal sounds um, using oscillator sync is by changing the pitch of the synced oscillator. So here's the pitch knob. You can hear that definite sort of uh, uh, vocal sound happening there. But again, much like when we were doing um, this with the cutoff knob, we don't want to have to constantly reaching over and adjusting the pitch knob. What we want to do instead is get that same sort of envelope generator thing happening, but with the pitch of this VCO, which is precisely why on the envelope generator there is a pitch two mode. I'm pretty certain this is purely to enable this kind of uh, trick to be done. So let's turn up the intensity. sort of big vowel sounds rather than just a wow sound again or a layout kind of thing happening and part of that is is coming from our, our filter cutoff uh, being modulated as well so that's where the resonance turned down but if we turn turn the resonance up we get that more of that kind of focal sound happening as well this sounds really cool in the very lowest octave instantly. Really dark and cool. Now one other thing that we can do here to uh, increase the expressiveness of how we're playing or what we can do when we're playing is um, as well as us getting uh, variations happening on the uh, envelope generator for pitch 2, we could also go into the edit mode, uh, head over to the slider assign, uh, sorry, the, the slider function settings, which is the second light along. At the moment it's set to pitch bend. Which you may want to keep actually because it does sound really good for these sounds. But we could also send it instead to pitch, uh, the VCO to pitch, which allows us to have additional control on the lever uh, of this sort of vocal sound. filter a bit that's cool awesome okay so that's two sort of flavors of a talking bass sound basically formed of the, the single recipe of getting this envelope generator right and applying it to one of the two destinations that gives us that kind of wow, wow, eow, eow kind of vocal sound. Okay, uh, I hope that was uh, interesting and useful, guys. Uh, I hope you can uh, try this trick on your monologue. Um, if you enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up button and make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss out on any more videos on the Korg monologue and synthesis in general. Um, I'll just give you a spoiler alert, guys, if you're still watching, um, because I just impulse barked. A Korg Volker FM. This thing is fantastic and I will be posting some videos on it real soon. Love this thing. Um, but don't worry, there'll still be lots of monologue uh, videos for those who have a monologue as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon.